Hi everyone, welcome to part two of our video series on photosynthesis. So today we're gonna to be talking about the light reaction. So stay tuned. Okay, so in the last video, we talked about how light's energy can propagate as waves and how it interacts and interfaces with our chlorophyll molecules. So today we're gonna place where those chlorophyll molecules are supposed to be within the plant and introduce the gross anatomy of about where things are gonna be taking place inside a plant. So if you take a look at a plant, of course it has many leaves through which it's going to be able to perform its photosynthetic reactions. And therefore the leaves are primarily going to be green and have maximized their surface areas. However, if we zoom in on the leaf, we see a cell called a mesophyll cell. And within a mesophyll cell, we see 30 or 40 chloroplasts, which are double membrane, endosymbiosis everybody, double membrane organelles that have what we call thylakoids inside. Now thylakoids are pancake-like membranous substances that are surrounded by this matrix that we call the stroma. Along Along the thylakoid membrane is where our light reaction takes place and within the stroma where the Calvin cycle is going to take place. Now the first things that we should do is to lay out the objectives of the light reaction and the byproduct of the light reaction. The objective of the light reaction is to produce ATP and NADPH, which is what we call an electron carrier that we'll look into in just a few moments. However, there is also the byproduct, which is oxygen. And this oxygen is going to primarily come from water that stands on the reactant side of the photosynthetic reaction. Now, during the whole video, I'm going to have the photosynthetic reaction as a chemical equation at the bottom or the top somewhere. So you can keep track of what's happening through the light dependent reaction, as well as the Calvin cycle in terms of the chemicals that are involved. However, for today, let's focus on the thylakoid membrane and the light reaction. Now along the thylakoid membrane, we have what we call the electron transport chain, which is comprised of several membrane bound proteins, starting with photosystem two, plastokinin, cytochrome C, plastocyanin, photosystem one, ferredoxin, and NADP plus reductase. Now I know that that's a lot to remember, but all you have to do is to draw it out a couple of times yourself and you'll get a hang of what's going on here with the electron transport chain. Now the ETC is also coupled with a another very important protein called the ATP synthase, which as you could imagine by its name is capable of synthesizing ATP. Now let's see how that's gonna work. Now, if you haven't watched the video on how light can act as energy, please click the link below and watch that before you come back to this point in this video, because it's gonna make a lot more sense if you understand how that light is gonna interact with our chlorophyll molecules. And if you have already watched the video, then let's get started right away. We start off with photosystem two, even though it's the first photosystem in the chain of reactions, because we just happened to discover a second and didn't bother to change the name, but that's okay. The point is, as we've already seen in the first video, the photosystem two is comprised of many, many, many chlorophyll molecules that are able to be excited as a result of light energy. Now, when one of those antennae chlorophyll molecules have their electrons excited, it goes into that high energy state, which is then volleyed from one chlorophyll to the next, to the next, to the next, until it reaches what we call a special pair of chlorophyll A. And then it gets pushed onto what we call the primary electron acceptor. Now, what's happening during this time is that the high energy of that electron is being retained throughout this process. And by the time it reaches the primary electron acceptor, we're now looking at an electron that's very high in energy that is capable of doing work. Now, here's the work that this electron is going to do. Remember that in an earlier chapter of AP Biology, which was chapter eight, we learned that energy is the capacity to do work. Now, this electron's energy is going to be doing transport work because as this electron is passed through the electron transport chain, through PQ, through cytochrome C to PC, it's going to slowly be dropped in its energy. But remember, since energy cannot be created nor destroyed, that energy that is being released from the electron as it's dropping in energy, is going to be utilized to be actively pumping protons or hydrogen ions from the stroma into the thylakoid space. And this 
builds a high concentration of protons on the inside of the thylakoid lumen. Now, why is that so important? Well, because protons, since they're charged, cannot simply diffuse back out into the stroma through the phospholipid bilayer. However, the only way that they can do this is through the ATP synthase. And as they fall out of the thylakoid lumen into the stroma, the release of that energy through what we call chemoosmotic force is going to allow that ATP synthase to turn a little turbine that combines ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and an inorganic phosphate molecule into what we call adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. So that first objective of the light reaction has been met. Now remember that the energy of the electron that's arriving at photosystem one is rather low because it was used to pump those protons. So here we're going to allow that electron to be submitted into the photosystem one, whereby it can be re-excited at some point by another photon and eventually become high in energy again. And this high energy electron is now passed on to ferrodoxin, which then passes it on to NADP plus reductase. Now here is where something really interesting takes place. During this entire passing, the energy of the electron is not reduced, as in it's still a high energy electron. Now why is this important? Well, because if we want to build high energy bonds that are in glucose molecules, we need to preserve these high energy electrons. And what we're gonna do is remove them from NADP plus reductase by carrying them in something called NADP plus and H plus. Because when we combine two electrons with NADP plus and a proton, Proton, then the NADPH that results is simply going to be like a truck that's carrying two high energy electrons on its bed. And as these NADPH become charged up through NADP plus reductase, now we've accomplished the second objective of the light reaction, which is to produce NADPH. So to sum it up, what's really happening is the production of ATP and NADPH are basically highly energetic molecules that are gonna be utilized during the Calvin cycle to make glucose. But we're not quite done here yet though, because remember that electrons are still finite objects within the universe. As in, if we were to continue to push electrons in this linear sense from photosystem two and out of the ETC through the NADP plus reductase, then eventually we might run out of electrons. And therefore, what plants do is a very special reaction called photolysis or photolysis. And during this process, a water molecule within the thylakoid lumen is split into two protons and one half of an oxygen molecule, and two electrons are then donated into the photosystem too. And in this case, what we get is the byproduct of the light reaction, which is that oxygen that we associate with plants. So the electron source is gonna be from water. And remember that the electrons that's coming in from water is relatively low in energy because it then has to be excited by the light energy to become highly energetic again. And therefore, water's electrons are low in energy, water has zero calories. And that's just an interesting side note. However, there are a couple of additional cool things that are happening. Notice how during photolysis, we have protons that are being added to the thylakoid lumen, adding to that concentration differential between the lumen of our thylakoid and the stroma. And another thing is, in the stroma, we see that NADP plus combines with H plus in order to form NADPH, which then further reduces the proton concentration in the stroma. So all of the things that are happening during the light reaction are working in concert to magnify that concentration difference between the thylakoid space and the stroma, allowing a lot of ATP to be produced. Now, Remember once again, ATP is a highly energetic molecule that we can use to charge up the energy of other molecules. And NADPH is carrying those high energy electrons that can be used to build high energy bonds. So what are we gonna do next? Well, next is Calvin cycle, which incidentally happens to take place in the stroma where all of these products are being created. And I think that's pretty awesome that all of these different reactions are working towards a singular goal. Okay, so that pretty much sums up the light reaction, which was the second part of our video series on photosynthesis. Now stay tuned for the Calvin cycle because that video is coming really soon. You might have noticed that I haven't really been changing clothes. It's just that it's all being recorded on the same day. And if you haven't done so already, click the like button, press subscribe and the bell icon so that you'll get updates on when we release the subsequent videos in this series. And of course, all the chapters that are still to come in AP Biology or any biology curriculum in general. My name is Mikey. Hopefully this video has been helpful. We'll see you in the next one.